Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with Alex King and Daniel Mangina. Today is Thursday. It is March the 5th, 2020, 4 p.m. New York time. Wherever you are on the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And my uh, Walt Thiessen dancers are dancing in the background as I'm doing that. So it's, you know, it's really cool to have my own dance crew. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like I've gone you know, pro or something like that. So that's well, you're, you're now JLo with backup dancers. It's that's great. what it is, except that. Well, uh, the box was on you, um, Alex. No, it wasn't. I muted. Nice try. Nice <laughs> try. <laughs> no, no, it, I was muted. Though. As first. soon as you, you muted, I muted. Nice try. Yeah, but you, but you said something first, so it, it was on you before you. You're muted. a liar, and your pants are on fire, sir. You are a fibber. You well, are I'll tell you what a fibber. We'll do. Why don't we ask the people who are watching live? Yeah, who, Jeffrey. Who Jeffrey, who was? Could you see me dancing? <laughs> of course, we could also just, you know, check the videotape afterward, but that would be too boring. <laughs> yeah, but that's an hour from now. I need to know now. <laughs> I mean, J-Lo, her dancers have no problem being out in public. My dancers hide in the background pretending that the monitor isn't on them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of us pretend that some of us are crafty enough to ensure that it's not on us. Uh-huh. You know what, okay. sir? <laughs> out of control. <laughs> 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 well, as usual, we're off to a flying start here, and that's that's kind of an appropriate thing for today. I, I don't know if you had any topics in mind, Alex. Um, I do, but uh, I'll check with you first to see. Do you have a topic in mind for today? I did yesterday. I got to start writing stuff down. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Well, okay. while, you, while you're thinking about it, I'll tell yeah, you Yeah, I'll let it I, marinate. Okay, go ahead. This is something I've been kind of playing with off and on in my mind for quite some time now. Um, Louise and I came up with a word, and I think mm-hmm. I mentioned it on a previous show. Uh, to describe situations where we are being, where we are consciously imagining the new thing that we want to have happen or the new scene we want to play out or the new thing we want to attract or, you know, something along that line. And we, we've realized that if we try to do that without kind of cluing each other in about what we're doing, mm-hmm. the other person will treat it like, well, this is what we really think is happening. And then that's fine, except that it makes it kind of difficult. Like if you're out trying to attract a house and you don't really have the money for the house, and one person's doing the attracting, the other person's saying, wait a minute, we don't have the money for it. I mean, oh, you gotta have, yeah. you got to be on the same page, you know? Right, right. So so we we need like a, a safe word to go to. And <laughs> Louise says, well, okay, that sounds good. What, what do you have in mind? I said, how about hippo? And she said, hippo, where from? And I said, well, from your favorite Christmas song. Her favorite Christmas song is I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which, of course, is about as impossible as it's going to get. I mean, the the little kid, the the, the nine-year-old is not going to get a hippopotamus in her uh, her family's Mm -hmm. two-car garage unless she lives in Africa. Other than that, she doesn't have a chance. (laughs) (laughs) You don't tell her what she's going to do. She's manifesting a hippo. You leave her alone. Well, I'm talking about in terms of real terms, not in terms of hippoing terms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in terms of what you're trying to attract. So that's where How do the, you know the, she doesn't live in Africa with a really big garage. Well, she might. Yeah. And that's why I allowed that exception. You know, that made, okay. that made it real, you know. Um, but for those who live in Alaska, that might be a little bit more difficult. Just well, because, for the hippo, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> right, I guess the hippo there is going to be kind of tough. You it's know, a the little sh- cold for a hippo. The shipping charges alone, I mean, they'll kill you. Mm. <laughs> so, I know. yeah. But, Amazon but anyway, doesn't even deliver it to, to Alaska, actually. Certainly not overnight, no. Mm-mm, no, no, no. Well, actually, they might, considering how long the nights last, but that's another topic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's the word we came up with. So whenever we, we want to kind of do some dreaming, do some imagining, and do it together as, as you know, like a little get out and see the world kind of a thing, we well, call it hip point. Oh, look at this. She's getting, she's getting special deliveries during the podcast. How much? Yeah, I, I, I left mean, my laptop downstairs, so don't say anything hashtagable until I get plugged in. She, she may be wearing the unicorn headset, but really she's a princess today. So, you know. I'm a princess every day. Every day? Okay. Every day. <laughs> That's actually part of our hashtag um, for our wedding. For your wedding? Yeah. You know, no yeah, kidding. you have to have hashtags for your weddings now so that, um, what the deal is, is, the deal is I'm gonna kill zombies. Like, All right, you kill zombies. Put the volume on low. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so wedding hashtags are a thing for social media. So like when everybody goes to your wedding and starts taking pictures and they post them on social media, they put their has your wedding hashtag. So everything is under one file when you go to look at your your wedding. So that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Oh, no, he did. He ate one. 
Unless someone else has exactly the same hashtags. Um, no, not usually. I mean, <laughs> we're using a website that w- generates your hashtag, so nobody else has it. But also, too, we came up with our own. So, yeah, this is, yeah. It's also going to be tied to your social circle. I mean, if, if well, somebody yeah, in your... Too. If somebody's in your social circle and they're trying to use the same hashtag, that could be a problem. But, you know, if our, our Joe Schmo over in San Francisco's yeah. using it, you know. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it. Because our wedding hashtag is uh, from a king to his queen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I doubt anyone's going to be using that. Volume, babe. Uh, where's the, oh, I just got it. Sorry. <laughs> We're usually better organized than this. <laughs> we are. We, I know. We don't look like we have it together right now. Seven Not really, in, no. We, we do. But we we do. still feel like we're in a good vibe. This is true. Very true. The vibe true. is very, very, very high today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. Well, it's always high when we're here. Right? So anyway, getting back to hippoing, the the reason I brought it up is I want to to not necessarily spend the whole show on it, but I just want to spend a little bit of time doing some hippoing, which is basically thinking of something that we'd like to have in our lives, something we'd like to attract that kind of goes against what we're normally taught. Not only we're taught, well, don't reach too high, reach for something that you can believe something that you can achieve, something that is within reach. Um, Mm -hmm. But today I'm thinking, let's just go for that crazy wild stuff. That stuff that's so far out of reach that it's unbelievable to see, can we hippo ourselves up into that high vibration space anyway? And then how long can we stay there? And given the fact that you're on the show, we stay on that vibe for the entire hour. We'll have at least a whole hour. Focus All on. right. Okay. Ooh, I'm so. down to climb. You know what? This is really interesting. Mm. Very short tangent. Very, very short. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw that quizzical look on your face. I was curious to know where that was coming from. Where it was coming from, yeah. Because I, I did a, yesterday, uh, I, did, I can't remember what I was doing, but th- I was asked a question. What is your ultimate intention? Mm-hmm. And well, I kind of live my best life. Mm. So, what would my ultimate intention be? I've got like inter- intimate ones and I've got like projects I'm working on. Mm-hmm. But I don't have like this, wow, because I kind of live my wow pretty much. There's a couple of tweaks that are working in, but I can see them as being possible. And so coming back off the dungeon, <laughs> I'm not sure what my hippo would be. Well, actually, that's what makes this a good uh, exercise because all of us, I think this is actually equally true for somebody who's really depressed or someone who's Mm. kind of an in-between vibration because typically we have trouble seeing much farther than, you know, a few feet beyond where we are. You know, the old headlines, headlights at night kind of routine. We, we, we have trouble imagining, like, especially if we're in, in a very low state, a very, like an anger driven or a fear driven or depression driven state. Trying to imagine feeling good in that state is usually too far out of reach, you mm-hmm. know, and, or if you're like in a middling state, you're like, Oh, I'm kind of bored. I'm kind of, I'm not depressed. I'm not happy. I'm just like, so, eh, so, so reaching yeah. for, you know, ecstasy is like, Oh, that's, that's a little bit far. Can I go for, you know, feeling better? <laughs> <laughs> But why not shoot for the stars? Why not? Well, exactly. And that's the mm-hmm. point. So so yeah. it's a good exercise to just see, can we stretch ourselves to imagine beyond what we've been allowing ourselves to imagine? Because this is just an imagination exercise. Mm-hmm. And and I want to emphasize I, this. this is, what's that, Daniel? No, I was going to say, Mr. Wall, and that's the funny thing. Mm. I think I've been limited and not really realized it because my life is good. But maybe right. I've gotten comfortable. Mm. Sure complacent because there's really no limit to you know how many of these great things are that can happen and and after a while we can get complacent we can say well life's good i'm fine you know okay next (laughs) i agree with dan i believe i have also been complacent and comfortable Mm. in my life the way it is because i i feel like i'm living my best life i mean maybe not to other people but i'm doing the best i can with what i got and I, i i have no complaints and ultimately, what they think doesn't matter anyway. What you mm-hmm. feel about your life is what matters. So, right. you know, that that's really the only yardstick that counts. Mm-hmm. So, basically, we're trying to stretch the yardstick. See, right. how, see how far we can take this yardstick thing. All right, here we go. I, I had, like, material things. I had, I've kept a 50 list for about a decade. Uh-huh. Wow. And my 50 list is 50 things that I really want. Mm-hmm. I really desire them. And then basically my play jar goes towards ticking things off the list. So mm-hmm. once something comes off, I have to think of something else to go on the list. But so there's always 50. There's always 50 on there. Okay. So, so you're doing some stretching. That's good. Mm-hmm. But this is the thing. I stopped really being so diligent with it 
a little while ago because um, I kind of didn't really, wasn't really that interested in chasing these, because they're material things, generally speaking. I'd say about 80% material things. I was like, I don't really care about those material things so much mm-hmm. anymore. They're not my driving factor, especially as I've made the transition over to what I do now. So, well, I actually just care about being happy, having good people around me, mm-hmm. and nourishing relationships, being healthy. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've stuck with my five pillars instead. And my five pillars themselves even have become a lot more, um, a lot more intangible. And so, ah, I know what the thing is. I'm going to make them qualitative rather than tangible material things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's definitely, th- definitely a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And, and I, a key thing I want to emphasize here, and I know you guys already know this, but I want to emphasize it particularly for our listeners. When you're doing this kind of activity, the last thing you want to do is to attach to what it is that you're trying to bring in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's true in any case, but it's especially yeah. true in this case. You know, you basically have to just throw in the towel saying, okay, I, this isn't going to really happen, but wouldn't it be great if it did? And then mm-hmm. just get into that imaginary place and, and just enjoy the imagination of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and where that comes from for me is doing the podcast. When I first started doing the podcast, I had no listeners. I had no hopes of getting listeners. I had no clue really how to get listeners because I didn't know enough about podcasts at the time. I'd only heard of them. And I said, okay, well, a podcast, that sounds like a good idea. Let's give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing the podcast with no hope whatsoever so of, you know, achieving anything, mm-hmm. but I didn't do it for achieving it. I just imagined, wouldn't it be great to be doing one and talk to all these great people who have these really fabulous insights and who could, you know, teach me more about how the law of attraction works and share their stories with me about, you know, what goes on in their lives. And, you know, to heck with how successful it became. I wasn't going to even worry about that. And yeah. it's coming true. Mm-hmm. It's coming true. It's been coming true all along that, I mean, literally I've had that. Every single day that I've been doing the podcast, I've had wonderful people to talk to. And at the same time, the podcast is growing like crazy, Mm -hmm. which is fabulous, you know? So I guess I'm I'm just overemphasizing it, but leaving that it's got to come true part behind Mm -hmm. is critical because that's how you can open up your imagination more. It's kind of like being a little kid. Little kids have no trouble at all imagining that they're, uh, you know, a a fireman or a nurse or a CEO or a sports hero or, you know, whatever it might be. Because they don't lose anything. Mm-hmm. They, they have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain because it's just going to be fun playing superhero. So they play superhero. There's, mm-hmm. there's, there's no risk. There's no, there, there's nobody judging. There's no, well, actually sometimes there can be, but we're not going to allow them. <laughs> um, but, but, but there's nothing, there's no standard to hold to other than how far can you imagine, you know, and how much fun can you do? Can you have doing the imagining? So right. that's where I want to go with today. I, I want to just for at least, not for the whole show necessary, but, you know, five or 10 minutes, 15 minutes, see how far we can imagine. Okay. So I'll get the the thing started. Maybe that'll kind of cue some ideas in your minds too. Yeah. We got to marinate. Yeah. Cause I've had some time to think about this. You guys are mm-hmm. hearing this for the first time. So it's only fair. So let's see. What do I, what could I reach out for that I would really, first of all, I, I also want this to be something that seems way out of reach right now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, not within reach in the next six months to a year, like close to never. So that it, it's never land material. Oh, I, oh, then I got one. Oh, well, you want to go first? Sure. Okay, go ahead. My own private island. Ooh. Private island was on my list. In fact, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I live close to the beach now, but you know, oh, hi, hi. <laughs> but yeah, my own private island with a mansion on it. They are really doable. Like I know really they're doable. actually reasonably priced. And you can get, and you can get them. Mm-hmm. You can get them. One of the a project I did in my old life was, um, in fact, I've done two projects, three projects with private islands. You can often get them repossessed. Wow. Whoa. Never really thought about that. Mm. Because sometimes, in fact, a project that I worked on, there was a whole collection of islands in Turks and Caicos, a small collection of islands mm. that had been bought and half developed. Developer ran out of money, went to the bank, didn't go too well. And so they were selling off pockets of, of this. Huh. Okay. Very All right. So that puts it in the achievable category. Mediterranean. So 
Do you want to be in the Mediterranean, Pacific, Indian Ocean, um, Caribbean? Probably Caribbean. Although I don't know because my body does not fare well in the sun. Yeah, I get sun. <laughs> I get sun poisoning everywhere I go below <laughs> the equator. Daniel's giving her a look. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, so, so why would you want a private island then? I don't, I don't know. Cause, cause I, get, like, I like sand moderate. and I like I like clear water. You can get you can get moderately weathered ones. Okay. So, Examples. <laughs> so for, for example, around Scotland. Okay. Isn't it cold there? Yeah, but cold, but not so cold. Yeah. Just one second. And I don't want to go too far with that because the whole idea here is to dream beyond our achievability. Yeah, so it doesn't really. It's achievable, so it doesn't count anymore. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't even matter whether it's achievable. I mean, you know, if it's achievable, okay, that's just a, a signal that perhaps we need to stretch the mind a little bit further, go for something even How bigger. How do you stretch past private island? <laughs> well, I'll give you one that for me is such a big stretch right now, I can't imagine how to get there. Mm, I would like okay. to have private homes in every destination around the world that I want to visit. Wow. That I can just drop into my own home in that place and then go out and see the town or see the mountain or see the valley or whatever it is that's there. And then mm-hmm. hop on a plane and fly to the next one and just nice. have my own series of private homes everywhere around the world, all different places I like to be, even though I haven't been to all of them yet. I haven't been to any of them hardly. No, but, <laughs> but if I'm going to go for something that seems outside of my reach, that seems outside of my reach. I mean, just having a a private place to go. Oh, and not just a private place to live, but with staff. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Well, uh-huh. I mean, if you're going to hippo, <laughs> you're going to really hippo, right? You're going to go for, yeah, top shelf, six star, not five star, six star. Okay. Yeah. Quick tangent real quick. Um, I just played back the episode and it the, the, the picture was totally on Dan the entire time he was dancing. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Watch, I'm literally watching you right now. <laughs> like, how did it get? I don't understand. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Know. Zoom is working against us now because we were both muted and it was on you while Walt was talking. I... Go to Zoom, YouTube right now. Zoom Go is just YouTube. plain unpredictable. <laughs> I mean, it truly is. I don't well, Zoom heard him complaining on Tuesday, so he, they were like, oh, okay. We see <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is betrayal. This is betrayal. Yeah. <laughs> it is. I thought is we awesome. had. A, I thought we had a thing, Zoom. <laughs> I for my friends. I dance for my friends, and you put you just put me on the mask. Who are you? I don't recognize. They totally put you on front street, bro. Like <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm moving to go go webinar. I mean. <laughs> Oh, damn, I just upgraded my. Package. I just upgraded my package. Ooh. <laughs> well, maybe oh. that's why they want to give you more face time. Who are you? <laughs> I don't recognize you. <laughs> this is an interesting thing because. Here we are. We're trying to do this hippoing, and we're really derailing. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like totally derailing. <laughs> I, I was going to say, well, I see yours as possible too. Mm. But it doesn't matter whether you see it as possible. What matters is if I see it as possible. I, but I'm no. But I'm I'm just observing and witnessing my myself mm-hmm. in terms of my plans to hippo, and I'm I'm like, have am I self sabotaging my hippo? aspirations mm. I don't know if you're self sabotaging you may not be self sabotaging it may be more along the lines of you're just not stretching far enough mm-hmm. I mean for instance you if you limit it to and here's the word limit if you limit it to what is possible well truly anything is possible so you basically excluded everything I mean no but I'm saying but, 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 but I, I, I was thinking in terms of what's outside of the realm of my known possibility so, for example, when you said yours, I was like, oh, we can do that, 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 and that. And then mm-hmm. you can have it. I went straight to, oh, Alex, you know, you can do it this way and that way. I was like, oh, am I constricting, in, am I constricting stepping into deeper possibility by telling myself that more things are possible? So limiting my stretchability, if that makes mm. sense. Or yeah. 
Is it just what you said earlier that you just haven't been doing it a lot lately? And so the only limit that you've got in place is that you just haven't been stretching yourself enough. It's not like you're blocking yourself necessarily. The only block is that you're just not spending enough time doing what you know how to do already. I think what he's saying is, is he's not stretching far enough because he believes everything's possible. So he's not doing it at all. So what would be is that, that? Is that? Is that the gremlin? Oh, almost like the I know that trap. Oh, I know that. Yeah. So, have to... yeah. so what's beyond that? Wow, I, I haven't had this much silence in a long time off of a question. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the beyond space is being held captive by the story, perhaps even that everything's possible. Maybe I've spent so much time talking about infinite possibility that I've lulled myself into almost a, a sleep mm. around stretching into infinite possibility. Mm-hmm. Sure, that's possible. I mean, anything is possible, so of course that's possible. <laughs> because we've got the unknown, yeah. and we've got the known unknown, and we've got the unknown unknown, mm-hmm. right? So, for example, I do believe everything's possible because I believe in quantum possibilities. However, my belief systems cap how much of that infinite possibility I can step into. Mm-hmm. But I do have a very stretched belief system also. Mm-hmm. So it's going beyond my belief, not possibility, but beyond my belief, my personal limits. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're creating new beliefs. That's what hip point is. But I don't know where that is. No, I'm, 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 I'm straight. I'm, I'm literally certain. <laughs> what do I, I? What have I desired? Or maybe I need to leave desire out of it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the gremlin was desire. New. The gremlin was desire. Okay. I, I would recommend looking inside, and by looking inside, I mean. Not so much, oh, gee, what's going on inside here? But more along, the lines of, <laughs> more along the lines of, I'm just going to open my mouth and see what comes out and let my inner being just kind of throw stuff out there. I've got Asperger's, dude. That's not going to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hi, yep, high five. <laughs> no, that's a limiting belief if I ever heard one. As, as, you, as you said that, my mind literally started quantifying all of the possible spontaneous <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then started mapping out the conversations on yeah. each one of those threads the geometry and math was going off in my brain yeah. like this yeah. <laughs> the maps were being drawn <laughs> pyramids and oh my god I get, that in, I get that in meditation the only time I get that stillness that you're talking about that spontaneous stillness is in meditation mm-hmm. only time that I get mm-hmm. if I'm awake and conscious the mind is mapping facts <laughs> facts I'm still at the moment, well, right now, I'm still calculating all the different ways that Alex can have her island and how you can have your unlimited homes. Mm-hmm. Right now, my brain is still calculating yep. all of the different ways to make that happen now. And I've got a strategy for both of you. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's very nice. <laughs> so, so, for example, I, 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 I set myself a really cool target for this mm-hmm. year. I want to teach my work on every continent, Ooh. which is a big thing. It's not a small feat. But it's not a hippo for me because, as I said it, I already mapped out all of the ways, <laughs> all of the ways it was possible and all of the people that I can connect with to make it work. Well, you just so, said something a moment ago that I think could be a hippo for you. I, I, I'm i kind of loath to say it because I think people should come up with their own hippos. But if you're struggling, I'll give you a, a, an idea to think about. That would be great. That would be great. I promise to do my own hippo after. Okay. You said that, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, you said that the only time you're able to still your mind that way is in meditation. If you're in conscious mode, you can't really do that. Well, how about a hippo of you can do it when you're in your conscious mode? Oh, no, I, I believe I can do it. I'm just talking about my auto response. I could train myself to do it. <laughs> this is the thing. I'm studying. I could train myself to do it. And in fact, I did set off to train myself to do it, but my brain is very effective. I get more upside from that. And I and I can get into meditation pretty much any time I I want. Oh. Or I'm going to set it. I'm going to set it as my hippo. Let me get okay. into it. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to achieve it. By the way, you don't have to achieve. This is not about achieving. This is about dreaming. I know. Okay. I know, but but the dream was getting lambasted by the story. Okay. So it's taking off the story. 
so that I can just sit in the yumminess of it, of me just being wacky and spontaneous mm-hmm. without my Asperger analytical mind mm-hmm. stepping in. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. Well, that, then I would say that qualifies as a very good hippo. Because really, it's doing what it needs to do the most, and that is mm-hmm. stretch you, stretch your imagination, stretch your ability to to reach further with your creative ability. And that's what you're doing right now, so that's cool. So, you know, I've seen now, the root. What was that? I just see the root. Just, just see that to me. <laughs> <laughs> the square root of the private island is. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> so. Alex, um, Dan was talking about how he could imagine you getting that island. Does that mm-hmm. change the hippo properties of your island? Does your island still seem hippoish? Um, no, because like you said, it's about whether I believe it's achievable. And in my situation right now, that is far, far, far away. <laughs> so it's still pretty hippoish for you. It's pretty I've, hippoish, I've yeah. One. Okay. I've got one. I've got one. Okay, okay. go. Go in a spaceship to another oh. galaxy. That was my next one, you jerk face. Oh. Well, you can go together. I mean, it's not. Yeah, we can. We can. That'll be great. We'll take a vacation. No significant others. It'll be great. So, like we saw this, we saw space, and you didn't. But I, I, I pointed and waved. <laughs> I'm like, there's the cape, the little elbow right there. That's where Kenny is right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, if that's what you want, if that sounds like it's really attractive to you, great. I mean, personally, for myself, the only way I'd ever be interested, and I guess this would qualify as a hippo, Mm -hmm. the only way I'd be interested in traveling to another part of the galaxy is if I could do it by transporter pad, because I really don't want to spend all that time in space. Oh, facts. Yeah, I don't want to take a rocket. That's too much time. Like, you got to go. Hello. (laughs) Yeah, but even in warp speed, you have to go to sleep, and that's like, well, actually, I don't mind taking a nap. Walk yeah, 10, you could great. do a lot of distance on walk 10. <laughs> <laughs> light years though. <laughs> Be the light to the 10th power. Yeah, sure. Mm, okay. All right. All right. That yeah, that's pretty cool. quick. That's I'm pretty down. quick. Just saying. <laughs> By the way, that sound in, in the background, that, that's the, the sound well, of your spaceship right. penetrating the boundary of the universe right there. That's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the noise. I'm muting myself. <laughs> Scotty has beamed him up. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, they literally started again uh, 10 minutes ago. That's Maybe okay. they were on break. I think they were. I think they just got the, well, uh, they, they got the intercom from the captain and they had to transport <laughs> some more people up. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Tears. <laughs> okay. Um, Kenny had a hippo when we first met. Oh, what was that? Um, he wants to tattoo a third of the world. Wow. Mm-hmm. Why a third? I'm curious. I don't know, babe. Why a third? I don't know. So I'm at least 33.3%. He said at least 33.3%. So, <laughs> so like a minimal amount. Yeah, minimal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. How how do you how do you tattoo a rock? I'm curious. <laughs> well, the people in the world, oh, obviously. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, there was your there was your hippo. Yeah. Was, the Earth itself. Mother <laughs> Earth is getting her first ink. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mother Earth has a lot of ink, and it's called graffiti. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's some serious graffiti when one third of the earth is covered with graffiti. Yeah. I mean, that's every yeah. graffiti artist working themselves until they're dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of work. A that's lot a of ton work. Of I don't know how that would work in the Sahara, but you know, things get done. Well, it kind of reminds me of those mosaics that, that Buddhist monks make. You know, mm. you, 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 you spray paint the desert mm. and the next day there's a desert storm and it's all gone. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I was like, I mean, we could put it in a jar. It could be sand art. I don't know. Like, yeah. It, it just sounds dye like it... the sand and then let it let the let the winds do it do its thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay, yeah. Make it, make it a little one more third of the planet space. Yep. Tattooed. Mm-hmm. Sure. Why not? You get, you you gotta account for the people who don't like tattoos. Or, well, that includes you know. me. I'm not a tattoo fan. Exactly. So, just, so that just, you're the you're you know. the two thirds. I'm in the two thirds. Yeah. You're in the two thirds. Exactly. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's okay. 
That's yeah. fine. Assuming yeah. you can find one third who are actually going to volunteer for it. I wouldn't force it good. on them. There, oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of people that want to do tattoos. That's fine. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be I'll be with you. Oh, I'm by myself? Okay, fine. Whatever, guys. No, you're going to be with a few million people. Oh, well, yeah, but I'm saying on on the podcast right here, I'm I'm in the square that's all by yourself with the tattoos. <laughs> yeah, sorry. One second. Well, I'm going to take, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take the hip wing to one more level. Mm-hmm. I would love to have a life experience where for some significant period of time, and I don't even know how to define significant, just, mm-hmm. you know, could be a, a month, second, could a be year, a it could mm-hmm. be 10 years, I don't really know, mm-hmm. where I'm just constantly meeting people over and over again who are conscious creators and achieving amazing things in their lives. Like everybody I meet is a conscious creator. Oh, everybody. everybody. Okay. Cause I was like, bro, you do that every day. What are you talking about? Well, no, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But I mean, yeah. actually meeting them. Like I'm going out in the world. There's another one. Oh my God. There's another one. Oh, there's another one. There's another okay. one. There's another one. There's, I'm, that for me, that would be great. And okay. I, I can, I, I can imagine it. So it, it qualifies as a hippo. But I have no idea how to make it real. <laughs> <Not whatsoever>. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Other than just to keep going with what I've been doing, you know. Well, yeah, because you can't control everybody else. So, you know, no, you just got to yeah. gotta figure out hmm, where, to, where where all the conscious creators are and go there. But wouldn't it be, well, I, I, I guess part of the hippoing is I don't want to have to go to a special place. I want it to be just, I walk out the door and there they are. No, well, they, you, they could just, be. They're just all over the place. They're doing this conscious creation stuff. And I know that I'd be able to recognize it a lot more than I would have, say, seven or eight years ago. Okay, so you want to be able to recognize them then? That's a big part of it, sure. Okay. I, want to be, right. I want to be able to see it consciously. in my okay. Not just in my mind, but, but actually look at somebody and say, oh, wow, they're consciously creating. And I love what they're creating. Look at that. That's fabulous. Okay, all right. I want to have more and more opportunities to celebrate the kinds of lives people are having Mm -hmm. because people are having tremendous lives, even if they're not doing it consciously. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people having really fabulous lives. I'd like to see more people doing it consciously and feeling empowered Mm -hmm. and feeling like, wow, they can really do this and and look at the great results I'm getting in that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I know that this is the one part I do know for sure. When the world learns how to do that, we have an entirely different world. Actual factual. The whole world just changes dramatically. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say it won't be really hard to notice. Right. right <laughs> I mean, it'll true. be pretty obvious that mm-hmm. it's going on. You know, yeah. you don't have to strain your brain too much to figure mm-hmm. it out. So that for me would be, that's a big hippo. That's like, oh. that would be fun. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You know, just everywhere I go. Good. Well, first of all, can you imagine how much happier the world would be? Oh, so true. How if they had tattoos? Have... Say again? If was... <laughs> Not if they had tattoos. <laughs> if they had tattoos, well... <laughs> But that's if I piggyback on Alex's fiance's idea. Yeah. But my mm-hmm. idea is just simply everyone I run into, everyone I meet is consciously creating and I can tell they're doing it and they're loving it. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I like that one. Mm-hmm. That one's fun. <coughs> Cause like, I mean, you had to kind of duck away there for a second, but like I was telling Alex, you don't have to work hard to see that one. You don't have to work. I mean, when it's happening out there, it's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because you can, first of all, the smiling faces will give a lot of it away. <laughs> when everyone is just smiling because they're having such a great time in their lives, it's like, okay, yeah, good stuff going on in this neighborhood. I like that. <laughs> in this neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's going on in the next neighborhood. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that to me, that to me would be pretty close to Nirvana. Working, I mean, I love the idea of living in an entire world of people who have gained enough um, self-confidence and belief in their own belief-creating structure to just be constantly creating their own lives consciously. And well, that's like playing a real-life life sims. Kind of. Yeah, because yeah. you're consciously creating and, you know, building your own houses and meeting people and creating little peoples and creating pets and all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like real-life sims. I enjoyed The Sims. In fact, I tell you what, I enjoyed Quick Dungeon, a variation of that called Caesar, a game where you had to build. So it's based in the Roman Empire, mm-hmm. and then you started just building like a little town, mm-hmm. and then you built the town, 
and you had to set the taxes and you had to encourage trade and then you had to negotiate with the local people to Mm -hmm. talk about Roman culture. And then when you meet certain statistics, then you get upgraded and you have to progress through more complicated things. But you also have to go to war with barbarians. But that was a good game. Tangent over. Okay. So like Sim City. Yes, but based in the Roman Empire. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, cool, cool, cool. Roman City, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I like the going to war with barbarians part. Don't ask me why, I just do. <laughs> it gives it an extra little kick, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like you're not just building buildings and stuff. No, no, no. There's like work to do. It's like the television series. I don't remember which one it was that Louise was watching an episode of, and one of the uh, secondary characters was playing a, a VR game. And mm-hmm. and the protagonist was trying to have a conversation with him, and you know he was begrudgingly taking off the VR mask to have the con- conversation, then putting the mask back on. And he's shooting at these imaginary aliens all over the place, <laughs> having a great time, building up a sweat, doing his workout. You know? <laughs> I do not recognize that show. I don't remember what it was. I recognize the movie. It sounds like Ready Player One. Yeah. I don't think it was a movie because Louise doesn't tend to watch movies of, okay. of the more modern variety. She'll watch right. our, our old favorites, but, you know. Okay. Yeah. What is an old favorite of yours, Mr. Wolf? Yeah, good question. Well, talk about total derailment. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Actually, do have my hip-hop, by the way. Just, uh, just. Uh, okay. This is, this is okay. I also have one. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you the answer to that, and then we'll go back to the hippos. So, okay. I actually, this is both of our favorite. And it's one that most people have never heard of. Mm-hmm. It's called Miss Potter. You're right. Miss, never heard of it. Miss Potter is the story of Beatrix Potter, the author of Peter Rabbit. Starring oh. Renee, Renee Zellweger. You know the movie. Yes. We love that one. That That's like, if we need a pick-me-up and we're going to watch a movie, that's the one we'll plug in. Yes, Renee Zellweger. That's a, that's a lovely film. Didn't she use a, 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 man, a man's pseudonym at first? When she was first writing the books, uh, I think she might have, but I can't remember for sure. It's not included in the movie. Oh, but but I think you may be right. Is it MRS or MS, Miss Potter? Miss. Okay. M I S S. Miss Potter. Yeah, definitely. I always got confused by those in school. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Understandable. And it was like PTSD ever ever since because I didn't want to call a woman by the wrong thing. We should have tried it when it was first coming into vogue back in the early ages of feminism. I mean, a- anytime you, you said something with an M in it, you got nervous because you figured you're going to offend somebody. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if my teacher's married or not. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm in fourth grade stressing about this. Like, this is out of control. Well, we I have figured- it now with, the, with the, the non-binary movement as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what? I had no problem with that. I got into no, but, but getting it wrong. I, I got into trouble. I've got oh, see, I just group everybody together as they, them, and whatever. Or oh, started asking people, what is your preferred pronoun? For the longest <laughs> time, I, I actually went with the plan of, I, I didn't want to call anyone Mrs. or Miss or Ms. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't know what would offend them. So I, I went with ma'am. And that worked until I, somebody complained that I had ma'am them. Yeah, you don't mean ma'am and people out here. What's wrong with you? Well, if somebody ma'am me, ooh. Up until that time, ma'aming wasn't even a word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, no. And then, and then no. they came up with a mammy, like, oh, well, there goes that strategy. <laughs> the only ma'am I use is no ma'am. That is not happening today. <laughs> you have to understand, this is like, you know, the late 70s, early 80s. So yeah, this, my this sister uses easy. it a lot, but that's because she's down south, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like, we're, I think they passed a law in the south. but. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what ma'am was. We were watching, um, I did tell you that I got to watch the James Bond films. I started with the Daniel Craig ones because... Just wanted to say something modern, and he kept calling her mom, and she's like, "Why does he keep calling her his butt?" His mom. <laughs> mom. <laughs> it's a British ma'am. What? <laughs> it's, it's like, why does he keep? Oh, so. <laughs> on the time travel. Ooh, Ooh, yes, good one. Hashtagable. I, I would put a proviso in there for myself, and that is time travel with the ability to get back. Because so many time travel stories are about getting stuck in time, either in the oh, past or in the future. No. I don't want to get stuck. I just want to be able to move at will wherever I want to yeah. go. <laughs> I'm just picking that out of my vortex right now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I would love to time travel. I would love to go physically back time travel. Like high, yeah, physically time travel. I would love to go back to do some things over in high school <laughs> that pl- that plague me right before I go to sleep every night. You know. <laughs> That's funny because the last place I want to go back to is high school. <laughs> oh, I had a blast in high school. What? I'm, I'm thinking more Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind uh, heading to meet Cosimo Medici in Florence. Really? The Medici family? Yes, it's one of my favorite um, historic. Families to, and to they are, who are they? The Medici's uh, were very popular, or powerful rather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, Cosimo Medici is quoted as being the person who kickstarted it, but actually his dad did, and then he built the name up. Um, yeah, medieval Florentine history is amazing. That's why I go there in summer. That's why I'm always in Italy in summer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. That's cool. And Alex, did you say you had another hippo too? I do. I would like to definitively know what's on the other side and how we die. Without dying. What would be definitive? Like, to know for sure, like, what exactly happens. I'm speculating. Like, I wit- like, I witnessed it so with my own eyes and ears and mouth, so there's no discrepancy. Okay. Well, it might not be with it might not be with your physical senses. You no, it doesn't have it. to be. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that would, that would be my hippo. <laughs> that, that, that one's That's in range. One. What'd you say, Dan? That's a good one. Oh, thank you. I try. <laughs> <laughs> there was also a ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There, was actually, there is actually a ceremony that you can do that actually. Does that? So, if you really want to do that, I could probably hook you up. Stop making things achievable. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> I'm trying to hippo here. I didn't squirt on our. I didn't. I didn't squirt on our inter- interdimensional intergalactic travels. We're still going to do that. As he posed. Okay, all right. Yeah, but also they're going to the moon in 2024, so like it's not all the way out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, but, it's a galaxy, but we said a galaxy, not this galaxy, galaxy, another galaxy. Right, but I'm saying 2024, they're, they're on their way there, so what's the next couple of steps? We're not that far away. It'll be within our lifetime, I think. Well, they also have to just... Because I was going to say they develop the express route, you know, because the current route goes like a local route. It's like, you know, five mm-hmm. miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Mars, but... Everybody goes I don't to know. Mars. No. I got to... I'm, yeah, no, I'm going to be mates with Elon one day. And... I want to name my own planet. How about that? But visit it and name my own planet. Well, you can okay. currently name your own stars, Ooh. so I can, I can see that happening. Well, yeah, you can name your own stars, but you just look up in the sky, pick one out, and go online. I'm talking mm-hmm. about I want to go visit a planet and be like, this is Alex Land. This is Unicorn Planet mm-hmm. right here. So plant the the flag and all that kind of stuff. Uh oh, uh oh, Dan just exploded. <laughs> I would like to bring back unicorns. <gasps> oh my god! You know, like what they did in Jurassic Park, where they found like the DNA yes. of like, the mosquitoes and then rebuilt it. Oh my gosh! I want to find unicorn DNA. Oh my god! And rebuild an actual unicorn. Oh man, that is a good one, sir. And thus, a movie was born. Fantastic Park. <laughs> Fantastic Park. Sorry, <laughs> Alex Unicorn King. <laughs> if I could change my name, oh my god! But you can. Well, I have to anyway when I get married, so I might change my middle name while I'm at it. Just do it. Hmm. I think I'm gonna. Just do so, the paperwork once, you know what I mean? I believe in you. So will we know who you are? <laughs> are you gonna clue I us mean, in? <laughs> I'll still be me. <laughs> Just a new ID. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fantastic park. Hashtag. Okay. Well, th- this actually went far beyond what I was hoping for. I mean, we did mm-hmm. like, you know, 45 minutes of, of hippoing. 
That, that's that's pretty good. I, 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 I mean, you guys might even be done yet. I mean, my brain is you know, pointing at his brain like he's about to explode. So there must be something else going on. <laughs> I'm just saying, my brain is stretching, Mister Wall. I'm 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 seeing the vision. Cool. All right. I'm seeing the vision. I would love a baby pet unicorn. Could you imagine? Could you imagine my puppies running around with a little unicorn like this? <laughs> micro unicorns, just like micro pigs. Yes. I still want a micro pig, but that's achievable. I just have to wait till my mother dies because she said no over her dead body. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and then Kenny said it'll eat his face while he's sleeping, so I, I can't. Okay. I was like, not a mini pig, but there's no guarantee you get a mini pig. Because they're just selling the little babies, and then the next thing you know, they're taking over your house. And Oh, wow. <laughs> and you find out it wasn't a mini pig. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. isn't too bueno. Mm-hmm. Disclaimer for relatives: the, the opinions uh, expressed on the show are representative of the people making the opinions, and not of the show <laughs> as a whole. So, mom and uh, fiancés and everybody else, don't freak out. This is not the show's official position. This is Alex. Oh, uh, we've had this conversation. <laughs> this I, was is not say, new I, don't, news. I don't think that this is something that they this have. Is not new news to anyone in this house. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty confident Alex would have been like, "So this is the tea." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Not that I'm counting down the days or anything. I'm just saying. Oh, wow. These are the things that the have hole, to be in hole. order. Alex, the hole, the hole. <laughs> Leave the hole. Leave the hole. Leave the hole. <laughs> Do you want to hold my shovel, Daniel? Nope. I, <laughs> go, let's just go. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, take the express route so he'll meet us there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love the fact that we are demonstrating by example just how high your vibration raises mm-hmm. when you start hip Yeah. I mean, we haven't oh, done I this have much. Another one. Oh, here we go. I want to survive a black hole. Ooh. Wow. Because no one knows what happens when you go in there or if you come out or if you come out in another, in another, uh, I don't know, what, what do we call those? Um, Dimension? Yes, thank you. Okay. So I want to be. I want to go into a black hole, see what happens, and then come back out and tell you guys. Okay. While we're while we're going to another galaxy, let's just make a pit stop at a black hole, see what happens. No, no, no. You can make. Oh, you don't want to come with me? You know, okay, fine. (laughs) This is your hippo. I will. (laughs) I was just, you know, I'm all about when we're going to a place. If we have to make a pit stop, make sure it's on the way. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, Walt, is there any space on the express route to? There is as much space on the express route as you would like to have. In fact, the express route can actually be spaceless. Mm. I don't, I don't really trust Alex's non <laughs> whole intentions. I mean, that's the beauty of hyperspace. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. hyperspace goes beyond space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if we drop out of hyperspace to just visit a black hole, to do <laughs> someone's hippo experiment. <laughs> but I also said I want to come back. I'm not just, I'm just going into yeah. a black hole. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's this, right. this is what probes are for. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Wow. <laughs> I'm just going to leave the whole black hole thing right there. <laughs> Fine. I'll go by myself and I'll meet y'all there. That's the beginnings of a Marvel character, if ever I've seen one. I love Marvel so much. Okay. Well, since we're in Hippo Land, I'm going to go take the Hippo Land thing in another direction. Mm-hmm. What superhero are you? Okay. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. Um, what hmm. superhero are you? Marvel or DC? You get to make one up if you want to. Oh! Okay, hold on. I'm going to need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Unicorn girl. <laughs> no, I need, I need a better. No, I need a snazzy name. Like something that rolls <laughs> off the tongue. Like, not. What is it? Super, supersonic? Metalhead or whatever, supersonic warhead. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be <laughs> guys. Come on, do Deadpool. Nothing really. All right. I watched Deadpool one and I don't really get it. <gasps> so I talk to me more. It's hilarious. That's all they get. Yeah, and also my Aspergy brain can't get past the fact that he was in the Wolverine movie <laughs> as someone else. 
Yeah. Louise and I movie. discuss that all the time. We see this character. Who, what movie did we see that person in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the screen film completely... Like, leave, dude, we already have a saber tooth. He was in X-Men 1 and he's not you. And mm. Yuriko, hello, Yuriko yeah. is there. So we're just going to forget everything that we saw. I well, find no, it to be insulting. To me. They, answer, they answer that question in the uh, post-credits of Deadpool 2. Ironically, Deadpool gets to time travel. And to all these different situations where he's been in and um, yeah, basically break the fourth wall. Yeah. But it's hilarious. So Google and uh, actually YouTube post credits of Deadpool too. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And okay. I'm, I will end the tangent and return the floor to your superhero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I still need a moment to think of my superhero, but I know what my power would be. What would your power be? That's a good start. My power, and I've always said this ever since I was into X-Men as a child, I power would be, um, oh, what, I forget the name of the character, but she, she has the power to absorb other mutants' powers. Rogue. Ah. Rogue, Rogue, yes. Yes. So but she I would want... life force out of humans and kill Well, yeah, that's the catch. Yeah, you can't, you can't yeah, touch anyone you love. So there's always a catch-22. But I would be able to. I would have the ability to... Turn it on and off. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that's groovy. I still don't have a name, though. Do you have a superpower or a super uh, figure that you would be, Daniel? So, I would like to be a cross between Mr. Manhattan and Ozymane Dias. I don't know who either of those people are. Watchmen. Oh, okay, okay. Hated that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that Osmond Bears had it done. Anyway, I don't want to spoil it for people. Which but... one was John Winchester? Oh, the comedian. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he was no. very nasty. Mm-mm, no. No. Nah. <laughs> so what were but their powers, I... just to elaborate for people who don't know? So Mr. Manhattan... Basically, was pure energy. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. I, he was so so energy that he became detached from humanity and basically mm-hmm. saw everything was pure logic. And then was so alone that he ended up just going and making his own little space on Mars. So not quite that. Yeah. And then Ozzy Mendez was the fastest and cleverest man on the earth. Mmm. I like those. I like good combo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What would you call this character? Hello. I had it and then I lost it. It just. just <laughs> I had this whole grand thing that. I, I thought you were going to say hello, Dan. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know what I would call it. <laughs> Maybe we should name each other. What would your account be, Walt? And then we'll name each other. Yeah, good one. Ooh, I like this. Interesting idea. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to second what you said about Alex. I think she's Unicorn Girl. I mean, she doesn't think it's a, a super powerful enough name, but I think it's a pretty damn good name because it describes I me. don't feel like I would be taken seriously as a superhero if I was named Unicorn Girl. Well, when you like, sat okay, there, what's your powers? <laughs> you heart when you sat there like this and they don't, they'll respect something. <laughs> they'll respect me then. <laughs> What'd you say, Dan? <laughs> no, they'll put respect on my name. Okay. <laughs> Thank you a lot, boys. Bye. <laughs> facts, facts. <laughs> I guess it's all how you look at it. If you're gonna look at it as a negative, then yeah, we should probably avoid that name. But to me, the Unicorn Red Girl is a pretty powerful and, and positive person. So I guess it just depends on your perspective. Yeah, true. Magenta. Ooh. Instead of because it's like a type of pink, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Instead of rogue, be magenta. All right, I like that. Magenta's good. Okay, cool. cool, cool. It fits your color scheme for sure. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And the purple and the blue, magenta definitely works with that. No doubt yes. about that. In fact, mm-hmm. I think there's some. I, I think I see some magenta highlights in your hair, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It's possible. It's yeah. possible. <laughs> Mister, what what would your powers be? Oh man, what would my powers be? I feel like Walt wants to be omnipresent. 
omnipresent. Mm-hmm. Or like Hiro Nakamura from Heroes. Ooh. I, I don't know the character, so I can't. Um, oh, well, it's he's the master of time, so he can freeze time, travel through time, and teleport. Mm-hmm. So he's master of time and space. Mm-hmm. Walt's canceled for not knowing heroes. <laughs> I am not a superhero fan. So, it was a show, yeah. short-lived series, but goodness, it was good. Okay. So good, they brought it back again like eight years later. They did? You haven't seen the new episodes? Alex, you need to put me on. Send me some text. Bruh. Bruh. Okay, first of all, this was like five years ago that they brought it back, but still. I don't care. I need to something in my life. Boy, I'm gonna need you to get on Google and start okay. I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you information because you need you need to know the Yeah, things. I need something in my life. You need to yeah. need to talk to you about Deadpool too, and we need to talk about um don't heroes. Have to I'm I'm just gonna be your friend on that one and celebrate you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fine, this. but I will send you info on heroes. Yes, they brought it back. Cheerleader and everything. They finished the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because the way that it ended before they went to the Carney Man was like, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, cool. Yeah. It was it was on for like two or three more seasons and then it was canceled canceled. You know, you asked me what my superpower is, and I I suspect that anything I come up with as a superpower as a superpower, you're gonna kinda of look look at me like I'm, you know, cross eyed or something. Well that's the but, beauty of it. But for me, my superpower is going to be I have the ability to personally meet and talk with and have long conversations with every single listener that's ever listened to the show on demand. And plus the ones that plus the ones that haven't listened and are going to start listening in the next 10 years. Dude, (coughs) master of time and space, you can do that. Just saying. Mm, True. My solution is a little bit. I never said that I've learned it all yet. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned it theoretically. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean I've practically learned it all yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. that, to me, that's that's where the fun is. I mean, I, I don't really need to be blasting large you know, mountains or something like that in order to feel like I'm a superhero. For mm-hmm. me, being a superhero is celebrating every single human life and, and animal life and every other life I can think of for what they are and what they're doing and how they're living it and how excited they are about it. I mean, that, that to me is a super life right there. Just enjoying all these people doing what they're doing and maybe being a, a small part of it in some way. That That's great. I love that. Now, what, what kind of superpower is that? I don't know. Sorry, I'm hashtagging. <laughs> Up a storm. Well, that's your job for good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this, this, this whole exercise we've done here has definitely gone far beyond what I was hoping for. Cause well, that's we, good. we are stretching our imaginations right now. I mean, I have seen more silences as the thought process goes on. I could see the, the wheels turning in your heads and mm-hmm. I'm feeling the wheels turning in my head as mm-hmm. we're doing this. Yeah. So I'm loving it because this is, this is what I was hoping for. This is how we learn how to stretch our ability to focus, to be conscious creators to achieve, to grow, to do all the things that we really want to do in our lives. So well done, guys. You, 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 I mean, you broke the barrier here as far as I'm concerned. This is great. Yay. Whoop, whoop. And I feel personally really stretched because I found pockets to stretch into. Mm. I, I love myself. pockets. All dresses should have pockets. Just saying. Yeah. This is a pretty hot pocket, I have to say. I'm comfortable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Walt, I have a joke for you. Oh no, you got a dad joke? Here we go. Yeah, wait, you got it. Do you have the, the symbol ready? Oh, I, I have to get. Well, I'll I'll see if I can find it while you're doing the dad joke. Okay, okay, ready. All right. Why sh- Why should you never fart in an Apple store? I give up. Why should you never fart in an Apple store? Because they don't have windows. <laughs> I've been holding on to that for like two weeks. I kept forgetting. Sending a voice note to my family group. I've been sending bad joke me, and my sisters are like, "Please stop!" I'm like, "I am." <laughs> yeah, yes. me and Walt love us some dad jokes. Let me mm-hmm. tell you. We, we, we've done some really, really bad ones too. I oh mean, yeah, really, they've been really awful. <laughs> I've, I've got one for you. I've got one for you. you okay, ready? Go. Okay. Go, go, go. So you're cooler than me, right? 
I guess that makes me hotter than you. <laughs> I've got to send you the picture of that one, Alex, because <laughs> there's, this, there's, this little, there's this little kid uh-huh. with like glasses like, I guess that means I'm hotter than you. <laughs> It's the brows that does it. It's the brows. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> these plastic sunglasses, like looking yeah. over the <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Right. Oh my God. You know what time it is. <laughs> but I just have to say, while we're running out of time here, that uh, for those of you who are subscribers, you already know this is an example of just how wild and crazy these shows can get. And we cover every possible topic within the universe and outside of the universe. We just did it again today. So for those of you who are not yet subscribers, this is kind of our way of saying you're missing a lot. Become a subscriber. It's really, really great. And actually, some of these shows you learn things from. Some of these shows you just plain laugh at. But they always feel good, no matter what. They're all sure. good. They're all different. I mean, next week we have, we've got an interview coming up next week, next Tuesday. Yep. Next right? Tuesday. Kim Lee is coming. Yes. You know, from Dr. Joe. And, and that's going to be like a, a monumental interview. It's going to be fun. I'm excited because I am never heard of, well, I've heard of Dr. Joe through you guys, but other than that, I've never heard. So I'm excited. Kim's great. You guys are going to love it. I know I keep, anyway. So that's good. So that another reason to subscribe. So become a subscriber. Most of you know how to subscribe, but if you don't know how, we've set it up, made it really easy. Just go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net, and a couple clicks away, and just like that, you're subscribed. And check us out on YouTube. Alex, tell, us, tell people how to check us out on YouTube, because obviously we want them to subscribe there, too. Well, what you do is you go to YouTube, search LOA Today Podcast Videos, and once you see our smiling faces, you can go down below, hit the red subscribe button. Next to the red subscribe button, there's a silver bell. Make sure you click all so you will always be notified when we're live. Yeah, it's just that simple. Okay, thanks for hippoing with me, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. It. <laughs> Anytime, same time, same station. We're, we're going to have to hippo again sometime, but this is really good. So Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and listeners, send in your notes about what you've been hippoing. Yeah. We'll include it in the show. You know, tell us about it. So. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.